Picture a building that transcends the mere concept of a set of apartments. Rather, this iconic structure stands as an emblem of cultural sophistication and architectural brilliance. Indeed, the Dakota Building, located on 72nd Street in Manhattan's now illustrious Upper West Side, has long served as the domestic home for cultural luminaries, from rock gods to famed authors, yet its halls are equally famed for inexplicable phenomena, rendering it one of the most enigmatic locations one could reside in. In today's episode of Old Money Mansions, we'll embark on an architectural quest to unravel the design mysteries that haunt this luxurious dwelling, sifting through the evidence and the folklore, striving to disentangle reality from mere illusion within its storied walls. On a crisp fall afternoon in 1880, an air of electric anticipation hung over a throng of spectators assembled on Manhattan's Upper West Side. Their eyes were fixed on an architectural marvel, poised to redefine opulence, the Dakota. Standing tall amidst quaint brownstones, the Dakota's audacious facade of red brick and golden sandstone struck a compelling contrast, echoing an unequivocal ambition to stand apart. Indeed, it wasn't merely a building, it was a canvas painted with audacity and vision by its creator, Edward Clark. Now, Clark was no ordinary developer. Affluent and forward-thinking, he harbored an aspiration to sculpt a haven for New York City's creme de la creme. Specifically, he aimed to craft an edifice that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fifth Avenue's grand mansions, yet infuse the safety and amenities of modern apartment living. And so, Clark's dream materialized in the form of the Dakota, a paragon of luxury and technological innovation during its era. It was to be not only a place to rest your head, but a symbol in the art of living well. Central heating would warm the vast airy chambers, while gaslighting cast a glow over hardwood floors and intricate fireplaces that were nothing short of art pieces. However, Clark's vision transcended mere opulence. He aspired to build more than just a residence, but also a sanctuary for an intellectual and creative fellowship. A fervent supporter of the arts himself, he pictured the Dakota as a magnetic hub where artists, authors and musicians would coalesce, amplifying each other's creativity. But Clark's ambitions didn't stop at the Dakota's luxurious walls. He viewed the Upper West Side, then a sparsely populated district, as a fertile ground awaiting cultivation. He rightly anticipated that the Dakota would spark a chain reaction, transforming the area into a flourishing enclave and time would vindicate his foresight. Architecturally, the Dakota is a fusion of aesthetic sensibilities. Romanesque arches coexist with Gothic embellishments and Renaissance flair. Its central tower, accompanied by smaller turrets, crowns the facade, embellished with crenellations that lend the structure an air of an urban castle. And indeed, stepping inside is an experience in itself. The grand lobby unfolds as a cathedral of affluence, marked by sky-high ceilings supported by towering marble pillars. Residences feature spacious layouts, punctuated by grandiose fireplaces and sweeping hardwood floors. Thus, from its earliest days, the Dakota became a magnet for high-caliber tenants, cultured, accomplished, and globally recognized. Painters like Edward Hopper and Winslow Homer, literary icon Edith Wharton, and musical virtuoso Leonard Bernstein were among its pioneering occupants. This ensemble of luminary tenants, along with its prime location facing the verdant expanse of Central Park, catapulted the Dakota into becoming a highly coveted address. Its inception marked not just the birth of a building, but the transformation of the Upper West Side, a crucible of New York's burgeoning affluence and cosmopolitan sophistication. As for the name, the Dakota, it was purportedly so nicknamed because, at the time of its construction, the Upper West Side was considered as remote as the Dakota Territory. This humorous moniker underscores the pioneering spirit that imbued this iconic building, a spirit that turned a remote area into a cornerstone of Manhattan elegance. Now, at the dawn of the 20th century, the Dakota's allure as a sanctuary for the stars reached celestial heights. Stage and screen luminaries like Judy Garland and Boris Karloff found their haven within its storied walls. These glittering personalities were not just enticed by its opulent suites and sweeping park views, they were equally enchanted by the privacy and security that the building unfailingly offered, precious commodities in the world of fame. Surprisingly, even the grim era of the Great Depression failed to dim the Dakota's luster. 
Despite the pervasive economic gloom, the building remained a siren call to wealthy New Yorkers. The rent, though lofty, was within reach for the city's well-heeled denizens. During these years, the Dakota became a refuge for such cultural titans as actress Rosalind Russell, wit and writer Dorothy Parker, and musical genius Cole Porter. In the face of adversity, these figures maintained their upscale lives, ensconced in luxury that belied the nation's troubles. Thus, by 1957, the Dakota had etched its name so deeply into the cultural fabric of New York that it was christened a city landmark. This wasn't just a protective designation, it was an accolade that cemented the building's place as a historical and cultural epicenter, safeguarding its eclectic architectural grandeur for generations to come. And the 1960s saw the Dakota soaring to new pinnacles of cultural prominence. A recurring backdrop in seminal films like Rosemary's Baby and classics like The Way We Were, it became inseparable from American pop culture. Visitors and celebrities thronged the building, spellbound by its illustrious lineage and architectural splendor. Its towering presence became not just a luxury residence, but a living narrative of New York's glamorous and intricate past. However, during the 1970s and 80s, the Dakota's radiant aura encountered a series of eclipses that cast shadows across its fabled existence. On the 8th of December 1980, the aura darkened immeasurably when John Lennon, the iconic musician and resident, was slain at the building's entrance. The air, once filled with the optimistic chords of Imagine, now felt thick with sorrow and incredulity. Globally, hearts ached. And the Dakota, too, carried the profound burden of that grief. It is indeed harrowing how the soul of a building can shift, not by its own actions, but through external events that play out on its threshold. Desperate to salvage the Dakota's earlier charisma, the co-op board enacted a labyrinth of stringent policies. Gaining residency was no longer just arduous. It had evolved into a Herculean trial. Designed to fortify, these regulations were critiqued as potentially exclusionary, walking a fine line between sanctuary and elitism. The building's formidable gates stood as dual emblems, equally inviting and repelling, depending on one's vantage point. In 1984, the Dakota's complex persona acquired additional layers of complication. Allegations of wrongful eviction and anti-Semitic sentiments rattled the building's foundations, albeit metaphorically. Although these charges receded into the obscurity of out-of-court resolutions, the tarnish on the Dakota's reputation remained indelible. By the time 1988 rolled around, the building's security architecture had been elevated to fortress-like levels. A matrix of cameras scrutinized every inch, guards patrolled its corridors, and gates stood sentinel at its entrance. For some, these measures transmuted the Dakota into an impassable citadel, contrasting sharply with its erstwhile identity as an inviting hub of culture and creativity. Thus, the ebbs and flows of history remind us that structures like the Dakota are more than mere conglomerations of stone and wood. They are living entities, pulsating with the joys and sorrows that life bestows upon them. Now, as you might know, Yoko Ono has long been an influential catalyst in shaping the Dakota's narrative. Since purchasing an apartment with John Lennon in 1972, a space she would hauntingly continue to occupy after his 1980 assassination, Ono has wielded her platform to champion peace and justice from within the Dakota's storied walls. In 1991, she graced the rooftop with a radiant white Imagine sign, a visual echo of Lennon's timeless hymn for unity and love. A year later, she sanctified Strawberry Fields, a verdant sliver of Central Park opposite the Dakota, as a memorial to Lennon. Through her artistic endeavors and vocal activism, Ono has not only elevated the building's cultural prominence, but also enriched its atmosphere, molding it into a beacon for creators and advocates alike. Even during the 2008 financial maelstrom, the Dakota remained largely unshaken, its roots anchored deeply within the realm of New York real estate. This resilience can be credited to its co-op structure, offering its residents a communal control over finances and decision-making processes. Nestled in the perennially sought-after Upper West Side, its location adds another layer of immunity to market volatility, preserving the value of its lavish apartments. Thus, 
Even with its hefty price tag and exhaustive vetting process, the allure of the Dakota continues to bewitch high-profile names. A constellation of celebrities, ranging from Madonna and Sting to David Letterman and the late Lauren Bacall, have all been captivated by the building's amalgamation of historical allure, strategic placement, and fortress-like security. And in 2018, a comprehensive renovation graced the Dakota, merging its timeless elegance with modern-day opulence. Meticulously supervised by the co-op board and an ensemble of architects and designers, the refurbishment left no stone unturned, though it conscientiously preserved the building's iconic facade and original elements. The updates were not merely superficial, but penetrative, reaching into the architectural skeleton to bolster infrastructure and extend new amenities. Both residents and critics celebrated these modifications, confirming the Dakota's indelible status as one of the most enviable residences in the concrete canyons of New York City. These days, in the face of an ultra-competitive New York real estate market that has seen record sales and sky-high prices, the Dakota maintains its stature as one of the most coveted addresses in the city. Indeed, the escalating median sale prices of its apartments from $10 million in 2019 to $11.5 million in 2020 and reaching $12. million in 2021 demonstrate the building's enduring allure. Several factors contribute to its magnetism, the irreplaceable vintage charm, a prime location on the Upper West Side and a roster of residents graced by the glitterati. Security is also a top priority, adding yet another layer to its appeal. And in embracing the wave of technological advancements, the Dakota is no laggard. A 2022 overhaul saw the implementation of a cutting-edge security apparatus, encompassing updated camera systems, advanced access controls, and sensitive intrusion detection mechanisms. The aim for this is unambiguous, to offer an impregnable sanctuary for its illustrious inhabitants. Likewise, lifestyle amenities received a fresh infusion of modernity. A new fitness center replete with state-of-the-art equipment and a luxurious spa offering an array of treatments were unveiled to residents. Thus, the fusion of historic elegance and contemporary conveniences positions the Dakota as an exceptional dwelling that offers the best of both epochs. It's a juxtaposition that residents find irresistibly captivating, enabling them to luxuriate in an environment that is both anachronistic and avant-garde. Furthermore, beyond its physical attributes, the Dakota has indelibly imprinted itself on the American cultural psyche. Its frequent cinematic and televisual features, coupled with its association with watershed moments like John Lennon's assassination, make it more than just a structure. It's a narrative focal point where culture, tragedy and celebrity intersect. And now we'd like to see you in the comments. We're building a lovely community of architecture and mansion lovers below, so we hope you'll take the time to add your thoughts. Have you been to the Dakota before or have an opinion on its architectural style? We can't wait to hear from you. And as always, we appreciate your continued viewership here at Old Money Mansions.